Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness to us through the week. Thank you because this is the day you have made that we may rejoice in your presence. And we ask you that God, in the next few moments, you will speak to us, you will minister to us, and Holy Spirit, you will have your way. We worship you and we bless you. Even them that are traveling, coming here, going to Keno to serve you, Lord, we ask you that you also bless them and be gracious to us today. Speak to our lives, O oh God, in this meeting and even in the uh, worship service. After this, we pray that your presence will go with us. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I hope you've had a good week. And uh, yeah, you had a good week. Yes. Yeah, you know, seeing you here is a sign that uh, God has given you victory. Amen. If you if you didn't have the victory, you could not be here. But uh, we are here because there are things we have conquered. There are things we have overcome, and that's why we are here. Now we are still in the beginnings of the year, um, being the second month, we thank God for January, spend time in prayer, waiting on God, trusting in God, and uh, asking God to guide us. And uh, at the beginning of the year, we also, you know, plan, we think together, we plan together, we uh, look ahead to think, what are we trusting God for in the, in the year? And uh, we have plans, but we also know that we trust in a God to fulfill um, this, these plans. We, we, we have plans to be in the house of the Lord every uh, week, to gather every Sunday. We have other meetings, we have other forums. And, and all these are important because, you know, we are, we are like the, the Trinity of God. We are also, we are trion uh, beings where we have, we are, we are a spirit, man is a spirit and uh, living in a body, and we have a soul. And therefore, we, we need to grow in all these aspects, that the body is taken care of, the mind is taken care of, and also the spiritual man is also taken care of, and that is also very important. And the reason we come up with the different programs and schedules in the, in the week, in the month, in the year, it is so that the whole being, the man, is growing. And, and I'm so thankful for church because church, we do not just grow spiritually, but it is through church we have grown even mentally, even getting a lot of wisdom that when we come to church, there's so much more than just you know, the spiritual well-being, but there's so much that also we grow in our interpersonal relationships and skills, in our families, raising children, parenting. There's so much we, we gather in the church. And therefore, you know, church is like a, is a school of life, yeah? so to speak. It's a school of life. There are people who, and there are things we learn, we teach in the church that people do not actually have opportunity to learn from anybody else. Yeah? There are things you, you learn in church that your parents never taught you. Are you, are you. Do you agree with me this morning? Yeah, there are things that your father, your mother did not teach you. Even your school teacher did not teach you. But you come to church, and uh, some people think church is just coming, singing a few songs, hear the word, and go home. You know, it, it's more than that. There is a lot that happens in the church. There's a lot of wisdom, there is mentorship. There is growth, there is uh, networks that happen in the church. And we want to take advantage of all that so that you don't just come to church and you are uh, alone or you are by yourself. There is also, also a place of uh, networking. 
Amen. It's a place where we come and network with each other because we are gifted, just like we look different, we are gifted in, in very diverse ways, very, very different ways. And therefore, we, we need to, to harvest or harness all that that God has given us, the body of Christ. The other thing about church is that uh, the Bible teaches that we are one body. And Apostle Paul uses the analogy of the body, and he says, though we are many, we are one body. Just like your body has many parts, hundreds and hundreds of parts. I don't even, maybe you don't even know how many parts. But though all those parts are individual parts, then they are also one. In the whole is called your body. And when one part is not well, the whole body is not well. Amen? Why? Because the body is united. Even your finger, if you have a problem with your finger, the whole body is not at peace. I've had people say, oh, I didn't sleep last night, my, I had a toothache. I mean, just a little part of the body, but you can't sleep. The whole body cannot sleep. You can't ignore the, the, the tooth and say, uh, you're just a small part. Well, I will ignore you and I'll go to sleep. No, you can't do that. Because the teeth or the tooth is part of the body. It's part of the body. So the same manner, when we come to the body of Christ, we realize that we are many, but the intention and the plan of God is that we become one. Amen? And, and this morning, that's, that's my goal. I want to uh, begin or teach a little bit about the, our oneness, our unity, our unity, because just like Christ was united, you know, Christ is a very good example of, of unity um, or, a, or a good teacher of unity because we see him totally united with his father and, and, and he, will, he refused to be, um, uh, to be distracted, he refused to allow anything to come between him and his father. They were totally one. And, and he kept on saying, I and my father, we are one. And you know, his victory was based on that unity. That I and my father, we are one. I go where my father is going. I do what my father is doing. I say what my father is saying. You know, I, I am, we are one. And that is so important. Now, our victory also as a church is also based on our unity. And when men are united, there is nothing they cannot do. It's not about how many they are, it is about their unity. When people, we have seen even a country like Kenya, 47 million people or 50 million people, if Kenya becomes disunited, you know, and they are divided, then it cannot stand. And Jesus said, a house divided cannot stand. It doesn't matter. So there is, it doesn't matter the numbers. People can be one billion, but if they are not united, they cannot stand. But you can find three people, ten people, united and doing great things. Changing great, you know, uh, changing lives, bringing transformation. Why? Because they are united. And when Jesus was teaching about unity, he actually talked of two. And he said, whatever two of you he didn't say two million he didn't say two thousand he said whatever two of you shall agree amen how many two two just two yes we want the unity of the entire church we want the unity of a hundred or two hundred a thousand the whole country but again he begins with the, with the least of all the unity. It's like he meant maybe a husband and wife because that is the, the, the smallest unit of, uh, you know, of an institution that we know in a family. When two come together and they agree, there is nothing they cannot do. There is nothing they cannot do. So whatever we agree, even as a church, you know, and not just saying amen, it's more than saying amen. It's more than just nodding your head. 
It is where it is engraved in your spirit. It is in our mind. It is in our speaking. It is in our lives. It is in our actions. Because somebody can say we are united, but their actions speak different. It's, not more, it's more than what we say. Okay? It's not just saying, oh, we are together, we are united. How many people have ever told you we are together and you are not? They know, they know so well. Even when they are telling you we are with you, they know they are just saying that to please you. It's more than that. And I want to give us a few um, principles or a few uh, foundations of our unity. If, if we're going to have unity, there, there are a few pillars, if I may call them pillars, that will help us to be fully united. And one of them is genuine love and concern. Genuine love and concern. As we serve God together, as we serve the people of God, we must walk in genuine love and concern. I want somebody who can help me read um, uh, John. I don't know that you have somebody in the media. If you can project John 13, 34 and John 15, 9. So love is so key. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. So love is a command. Love is not a suggestion. Love is not a proposal. Love is a command. And he says, a new command I give you, that you love one another. Amen? As I have loved you, Jesus speaking, that you also love one another. So he says, I have loved you. See how much I love you. When you think about the love of Jesus Christ, because he says that is a, that's how we should love one another. He's our role model when it comes to love. We should emulate him. So he says, look at how much I love you. How, do, how much does he love you? He went to the cross for you and me. That's the kind of, this kind of love is sacrificial love. It is where you sacrifice for the other person. Do you know ministry is about sacrifice? Ministry, you cannot be effective in ministry if you are not willing to sacrifice. Amen? Are you with me this morning? Yes, you must be willing to sacrifice. Meaning, sacrifice means there is something you leave for something else. Sacrifice means Jesus left the glory and the riches of heaven. He became poor so that we become rich. He left heaven, the place where we read their streets of gold. Angels singing, worship, no devil. Can you, play, can you imagine living a place where there is no devil coming to where the devil is? That is a sacrifice. <laughs> Amen. Look at how much. And why is he doing this? How he loves us. He said, I'm willing to step out. Leave my glory. Leave my father, the angels, the glory in heaven. And step out to where men are. So that I can save them. Can you see that kind of sacrifice? So sacrifice, ministry, is about sacrifice. The church was born through sacrifice. So you cannot serve. And I know you are serving in a department, in this church, whatever. But you cannot serve if you are not willing to sacrifice. If you want to stay within your comfort zone, then you cannot sacrifice. Jesus decided, I'm, not, I'm, I'm willing to be inconvenienced. I'm willing to step out of my comfort. Because there are people who want to remain within their comfort zone. You know, I sleep at this time, I wake up at this time, I eat at this time, I do this, I do this, weekend is my time to sleep, Sunday morning is time, my time to sleep. If you are not willing to sacrifice, you cannot serve effectively. Ministry is about sacrifice. Living what is rightfully yours. Peter came to Jesus one day and he asked him, Master, we left everything. We left our children, our wives, our families, our businesses. We were fishermen. We were doing well. We left everything and we followed you. What are we going to get? That's sacrifice. 
simply he's saying, we left everything. We sacrificed everything. What are we going to get? And of course, you know, he said, whatever you left for my sake, I'll give you how many times? Not two, not a hundred, not, I mean not ten, but a hundred times. And then after that, eternal life. So there is always a reward for sacrifice. Look at the disciples. They sacrificed their lives for the sake of the church and the gospel. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was stoned to death. You know, John was put in oil. You know, can you imagine Mafuta in a chemuka and he had thrown in there? I mean, these, these people are, and they are human. I mean, walikuwa waze tu kama waze wengine. Lakini they decided we are going to sacrifice for the sake of the gospel. Amen. There are people who can never go to a mission because they don't want to leave what they eat, where they sleep, they love their bed. But you have to be willing to go to a mission, get in a con- sleep on the floor. I remember one time we were preaching in Moranga to go to Naradia, he's in ma- Mashoya. Unajua Mashoya? Ia ma- Maganda ya, ma- ya Mandizi. Ni Maganda ama ni nini? Majani. <laughs> Mandizi. But you're willing, but, but you're not focusing on where you're sleeping. You're not focusing on what you're eating. You are focusing on your goal. Where are you going? I remember there are times we preached in Kangema and we were sleeping in a shop that was very dirty. You know, which I think used to be a bar and it was closed. But you see, when you sleep there, you're not wondered. You know, and you wake up in the morning, you shower, put on your suit. People may think you're coming from a five-star hotel. And you preach the gospel. People come to the Lord Mission accomplished. Go back to your comfort. I mean sacrifice. But today we have a generation that are not willing to sacrifice. If you're going to serve effectively, you have to sacrifice. There are times you don't feel like waking up, but you decide, yes, I will wake up because I'm willing to sacrifice. I am tired. The whole week was hectic, but I'm willing to sacrifice. That's a love. That's what Jesus said, as I have loved you. So Jesus is how he gives us the example of how we should love. John 15 and verse 9. So this is about sacrifice. Leadership, service is about laying down your life. There are people who lay down their lives for this country. And they decide, actually there are people who have died for this country. From even the days of freedom. And all the other times. There are people who lay down. Today there are many people who have died fighting for their country like Ukraine. I mean there are people who have fought for their nation. There are people who have fought also for the ministry and the kingdom of God. Amen. So give me that verse again. So he says you have to lay down your life. So greater have love has uh, no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And you're not laying it down for what you're getting, for what others are getting. Are you seeing the difference? Because many times we feel like, oh, I can sacrifice because of what I will get. Here, you are saying, I will sacrifice not for me to get, for somebody else to get. You see the difference? Yeah. For somebody else to get. It's not me. I'm not thinking, when Peter is being crucified, he's not thinking about himself. If he thought about himself, he would have said, no, 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 forget about it. Let me, let me go back to fishing. But he's thinking about how many others will benefit. So you think about how will my service, my sacrifice benefit other people, not myself. You cannot be a leader, you cannot be a true servant if you only think about yourself and your needs. Your life is too small to live just for your life. All my food, my house, my car, my whatever, my, 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 my. No. I mean, your life is too small. Amen. You have to be bigger than that. When you look at Jesus, he's not thinking about himself. When he felt a bit weak, he said, remove this cup from me. But then he said, not my will. Let your will be done. What is the will of God? I lay down my life for the sake of the whole world. I mean, that's how, that's the foundation of service. That we lay down our lives for others. Hallelujah. We have people that have laid down their lives for, um, for the gospel. People that have suffered for the gospel. 
I was listening to the testimony of the late uh, uh, Reinhard Bonke, and he said how he left his country, Germany, and um, he came to South Africa. He was sent as a missionary, and he felt, I don't want even the, the way they have sent me and whatever I'm doing, I'm not fulfilled. I'll step out and begin to go to the villages and go out there and evangelize. And then he said he would travel People would invite him to, and he would travel for a whole day, I mean half day, to go and minister, six hours, and then find five people waiting for him. And he started asking God, God, I think I, I didn't see it right. Maybe the vision I saw was not from you. Because God had called him and he showed him a vision of Africa washed by the blood of Jesus. But he, now he's trapped. So you are thinking, Africa... Africa, one, almost one billion people, and then you're you are thinking five people. I mean, there's no connection. The, the, you know, discouragement could settle in. You're thinking Africa, but here you're seeing five people. And you have traveled for how long? Six hours to go and minister to five people. Because many of us are not willing to go through the process. We want the outcome. But we are not ready for the process. Yeah? We want the nyama choma, but we don't want the, to burn our fingers, turning and chomering and whatever. Na maka, na uchafi ya maka, na nini, na moshi. You know, we don't want that process. But we want the nyama choma on the table. But there is somebody who burnt their fingers. Nothing just happens. But he decided, I will be consistent. I will be persistent. We were here on Friday, no, Saturday, and we, with the life ministry, and, and I shared about three Ps that are important in winning souls and evangelism. And one is persistent. And the other one was, those who are here, huh? power. And the other one was, huh? I said persistent, power, and huh? preparation. You have to prepare. And what we are doing right now, I'm preparing you for the call of God in your life so that you can serve God effectively. This class is for preparation. But again, you have to be persistent. Praise the Lord. Before Reinhard Bonke died, he witnessed crusades in Nigeria that one crusade would have like 1.6 million people. One crusade. Now you can imagine there's no relationship between or rather there is a relationship between five and 1.6 million. If he gave up on the five and thought what am I doing here? Let me go back to Germany. Let me find something else to do. He would never have seen 1.6 million people. Hallelujah. And he would see like 100,000 people come to the Lord in one crusade. Why? He did not give up on the five. It's a process. When Jesus came, he did not start, start with the crowds. He didn't start with the, with the multitudes. He started with just 12. He called 12. And he said, hey, guys, come. And the Bible says he spent time with them. He taught them. He, lay, he poured his life unto them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm talking about sacrifice. Give me that verse again. We, we need to look at it up to verse 15. Glory to God. No man has greater love than to lay down for your friends. Look at verse 14. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, uh -huh. no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things I heard from my father I have made them known to you. So, number one, in our service, in leadership, is genuine love and concern. 
where we love God and we love God's people. And we love the lost. Amen? We love God. We love the people of God. That is the church, the believers. But we also love the lost. Amen? Because Jesus loves everyone. He loves those who are born again. He also equally loves those people who are not born again. That they may come to him. So love is key. It's my prayer that this church will be uh, a church full of love. We went to South Korea one time and we found a church called, you know, the Church of Love. I think they called it Sarang, Sarang Church. The Church of Love. And it was a big church, like a whole city. May this be the church of love. That anybody coming, you know, it can start with the two or three people. And we spread the love. That, you know, forget about Valentine, amen? Love is not a day thing. It's not an event. Amen? Okay, I'm not against Valentine. Some of you, I know you are prepared. And you started wearing your red and white. That's okay. But, but you see, <laughs> what I'm saying is that let's forget about Love being an event. And, and this kind of love we have read, it's about laying down. Valentine, most people think of love Valentine, they think about what I can get. They don't think about what I can give and share and be a blessing. They think about what am I going to get. It is selfish love. That is lust, it's not love. Love is laying down your life for others. Amen. We have been to Kenya for the last two days. It's that kind of love that we can travel and lay down our lives for others. And we are going back this afternoon. We lay down our lives for others. Hallelujah. Even look at your money. How much do you just spend on yourself and yourself? If you, if you never give to save other people, then you only think about your own needs. Every time you think it's about my needs, my rent, my bills, my food, my transport, my what, my what. But can you live your life larger than that? Where you live your life not for your sake, but for others. Hallelujah. I, I think I'm, I'm in the life where I don't think so much about myself. If you look at my week, I don't spend my week thinking about myself. I spend probably 90% of my week thinking about other people. How I can be a blessing. I spend hours and hours and hours preparing how I can teach and bless and bless and bless other people. Thinking about others. And that's maturity in service. Because if you are where you are, you know, children are the ones who only think about themselves. Even if you give them something, they will always like, um, it's mine. You know, one of the easiest words that children learn is yangu. Yangu, it's mine. You know, and nobody teaches them that. But anytime, even if you give them five, you know, candy, now Mwambia, give me one. No, 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 yangu. It's mine. But that's, we can excuse children. But you see, when people behave like that, even people who are adults, it's because they have not matured in their faith. But when you mature, you begin to share your life with other people. You get somewhere where your life now, it's, it's not longer private. You know, you cannot be in ministry and serve God or become a leader and your life is private. Your life stops being private. It, is, it becomes public. Such that you're even very careful how you live your life. Because you know, even if you don't have cameras around you, there are people who are watching you to see how you live. To see how you treat your wife or your husband. To see how you do your business. How you react to situations. How you react to problems. There are people who are watching. You're a leader. And, 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 and people look up to leaders to see how they behave. Amen? And when things go well, it's the leadership. When they go bad, it's the leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. 
So it's very important that our, our, our journey is full of love. I pray from today, this church, we can make it a place of genuine love. Amen. Amen. Where we love God, we love the people of God, genuinely. You know, you cannot love somebody, and then after you leave them five minutes, you are gossiping and you are backbiting them. That's not love. That's called hypocrisy with a capital H. That's hypocrisy. You can't say, oh, I love you, my brother, my sister, I love you, I love you. Good to see you. How was your week? And then when you leave church, the whole of the afternoon, you're gossiping, you're talking, you know, negative. That's not love. That's, that's being a traitor. Like Jesus, Jesus, you know, would be a traitor and, uh, and he would come and kiss Jesus. You know, a kiss is a sign of love. But the kiss is to show the enemies. This is the one. We need to be genuine in our love. Are you with me? That when I say I love you, I mean exactly that. I love you, full stop. It's not a comma. So many people love you, but with a comma. When they are not with you, they continue with another story. Oh, ata ukimuona. Oh, did you see? Did you know? Did you hear? By the way, you don't love people because they are perfect. Are you with me? God did not tell us to like people. You may not like me, but you are commanded to love me. Have, did, we, did we read? We read in John 13, 34. A new command I give you. Love one. So love is a command. It's not a suggestion. Take it or leave it. No, it's a command. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you may not love Dennis. But you are, I mean, you may not like Dennis, but you are commanded to love him. You may not like my suit, but you are commanded to love me. Praise the Lord. Because you don't love people because you like everything about them. If I scrutinize you very well, there are many things I will not like about you. And that is true. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. All of us. There are things you not like about that person, about that person. I don't, li I don't like that. I don't like their hairstyle. I don't like this. I don't like the way they talk. Maybe they are too quiet. They talk too much. Maybe they are this. Maybe they are that. I mean, there are things you may not like about, because we are also different. We are also different. So you are not commanded to like people. He didn't say a new command I give you, like everybody. No. He said, love one another. Praise God. So you love, you know, love, and the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. So actually love will cover even people's sin. So you don't hate people because they have sinned. Actually somebody can sin and you still love them. Are you with me? You don't like the sin or love the sin you will tell them, yes, you are doing wrong. I, you know, this is not right, brother, whatever. But, but you see, you can't hate them. You are not asked to hate anybody. Even if they stole from you, you don't hate them. Hey. Injiri, see what I see? Hello? You don't hate. Because in your heart, you should not carry hatred for anybody. Praise God. Even somebody who sacked you from that job 10 years ago, and when you scrutinize, I know you have been doing that for a long time. Every time you look at it, you say, Hapa nidionewa. Hapa. Hapa nidionewa. Ata kama likuonea. Nawe haukuona. Bado naambiwa umpende. You may not like what they did, lakini continue loving them. Hallelujah. Haven't you read? The Bible says even love your enemies. Now, if you are commanded to love your enemies, how about the people in church? None of them is your enemy. Oh, you have enemies in church. <laughs> Amen? You are commanded to love even your enemies. Now, if, you, if Jesus can say love even your enemies, because he said when you do that, you are putting fire on their bosom, on their chest. It will burn them. They'll go thinking, and the way I wronged this person, and they still love me. 
The way I said nasty things about them, and they, I lied about, and they still, they still love me. You know, you're putting fire. That's the kind of gospel that we are called to preach. May God fill this house with the love, starting with you and me. We will love people unconditionally. Amen? May that be the theme of our year, that this church will love people. Amen? When you see when somebody you don't know coming to church, stop fast looking at them. Uh, are they lovable? Are they, how are they dressing? Are they, are they look like from where? Tribe? Which? Where, you know? No, forget about all those things. We are one tribe. We are the children of God. And after all, we are all Kenyans. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whether poor or rich, it doesn't matter how they are dressed. It doesn't matter. Praise God. Even if they came without shoes, love everybody. We are called to love everyone. May our hearts be filled with the love. Do you know love is a witness? Amen? Amen. Jesus' teaching, is it in John 17? He said, when you love one another, they will know that I have sent you. Glory to God. Are you with me? You love one another, they will know. It's love is a witness. Amen? There are people, because the world has no love. You know, let me tell you, this world has no love. And the world does not know love. Amen? Even when you see people walking together in the world, they are drinking together, eating yamachoma together, and you think they love one another, it's not love. It's convenience. After two months, you hear that there be two calls and, and what they are happening and they are fighting and they are all over. It's not love. It's only in the church where we know true love. Because God is love. If people are not with God, they cannot know true love. Praise God. So we can make love our witness. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? That somebody will come to this church for the first time. Somebody will watch us on TV. Do you know love can even be seen through the screens? Yeah? Somebody who, did it, who loves people genuinely. Even if you have never met them and you watch them on TV, you can tell that person they are genuine in their love. Even if you don't know their name. Love can be through the radio. Love can be through social media. There's somebody who can watch on TV and you tell, ah, who are you? Ah, he can talk about people, but he doesn't love people. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Yeah, love is a witness. Love is founded in God. For God so loved the world. The world can sing about love. They can sing about Maraika and Akupenda. They can sing about whoever else. Especially they love to sing about women. Huh? And they sing to women about love. Trying to show love. But let me tell you, they don't know anything about love. They do that for money. They do that for the song to have a hit. But let me tell you, the church we are the custodians of love. So if there is no love in church, don't look for love outside there. Praise God. I've had people leave church and they say, oh, mimi siku na upendo huko, you know, people don't love each other. Go and try outside there. Let me tell you. Outside there, they will misuse you and dump you in the name of love. Amen? But when we are in church, May we be the carriers of love. May God fill our hearts with the love. Genuine love. Not that kind of love or just when I need something. Or when you're inviting people to help you, to support you. When you have this or the other. No, 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 no. Love is not using people. Amen. Love is giving. The foundation of love is John 3.16. For God so Love the world that he gave. Full stop. So, you cannot love without giving. 
You can give without loving, but you can never love. Anybody who is full of love, they are givers. One of the tests of love is giving. Praise the Lord. Anyone who is full of love, they are givers. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sio inatosha ya leo. Even if I don't speak anything else, if, if you would take that, the people that are here, and we sambasa that to everybody else in this church, and everybody in this church is full of love, let me tell you, we will see a different church where we love each other unconditionally. Praise God. That our love is genuine. In the book of James, he says, don't just love with words, but with actions. Because sometimes we can just say, oh, I love you, I love you. But, but when somebody is in need, we are not there. Our love should also go to actions. We cry with those who are crying. We laugh with those who are laughing. Amen? And he says, if you find a brother who is hungry, what do you do? Give them food. It is a demonstration of love and your faith. Praise the Lord. So our love should also be practical love. Not just saying it, but it's practical. That if somebody is sick, we are there, we surround them with our prayer, we visit with them. Love. In Matthew 25, Jesus talked about it. And he said, I was hungry, you didn't give me something to eat. I was thirsty, you didn't give something to drink. I was in prison, you didn't come to see me. I was in hospital, you didn't come to see me. I mean, all those things. They are, they are, all them, they are opportunities to show love. All those are opportunities. When somebody is unwell, it's an opportunity to show love. When somebody is in prison, stop asking, why are they in prison? It doesn't matter. <laughs> The foundation of people being in prison is sin. Is sin. Hello. So don't say, oh, in prison. Watch a ripper. Watch a vune. No, 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 no. Don't judge people. Don't condemn people. Amen. Our work is not to condemn people. Those people are already condemned. If we condemn them, we finish them. Are you with me? Our work is not to condemn people, but to love them unconditionally. They're in the hospital, we visit, they show the love of Christ. They're in prison, they are hungry, they are thirsty, they need clothes. We, we just visit. Like now there are so many people who need food. And we decided the other week we had a meeting, we'll have a box, I don't know that it's here already, where you can bring something every week for somebody who is hungry somewhere. And don't say you have nothing. Nobody has everything, but everybody has something. It doesn't matter. Even if you bring one kilo of unga, it will help somebody somewhere. And you can make it your, your, your habit. Every Sunday, I'll bring something to be a blessing. That is true love. One is as a favor. 